Coming up next on Hands on Windows, Clippy is back. Well, not exactly, but there is something called Copilot Vision, which will feel eerily familiar. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt, and this week we're going to take a look at one of many new Copilot features co- called Copilot Vision, sort of the return of Clippy. You'll see what I mean by that soon. Um, Copilot is getting complex. So, you know, we've talked a lot about Copilot this year. We've talked a lot about AI, all the new features that are coming. Um, but one of the weird things about Copilot is that it's it's in a lot of places, right? So I tend to focus on it in Windows, which makes sense. Um, it is an app. That app has changed a bunch. But Copilot is also on the web at copilot.microsoft.com. It's part of Bing Search now. Um, it's also Bing Search as part of Copilot now. There's a whole mess there. Um, there's a standalone Microsoft 365 Copilot app that's in Windows 11, but it's also in the individual Office apps, right, on Windows and the Mac, right? Um, it's on mobile. So there's a standalone Copilot app, Microsoft 365 Copilot app, and then other Microsoft apps that have Copilot capabilities. Um, and so once you get into this weird matrix of Copilot implementations, sometimes it gets hard to know where certain things are, right? So Microsoft introduces these new features, and you're like, great, well, where do I get that? It's not always obvious. So I'm going to bring up the Copilot app in Windows to show you just one example. So in in Windows, if you go into settings, one of the unique features you'll see here is this phone connection feature. So in Windows only, I can have Copilot give me information that's based on things that are on my phone, right? In addition to things that are on Windows or on the web or wherever else. So that's kind of interesting. Um, there's this voice mode uh, where you have different voices to choose from. This is kind of a minimalist user interface. If I choose a different voice, it doesn't give me a sample. And it also doesn't have other options that are available in other places. So for example, if you were to bring this up on your phone in the Copilot app, you would have the opportunity not to just hear it, try different voices, but you'd hear those voices and you could control the speed of those voices. So you could speed them up or slow it down, which actually I have to say is kind of a, kind of a useful feature. So for some reason, that's not in Windows yet. So one feature that's like that, it's brand new, uh, announced recently, and it's just starting to roll out as I record this, is something called Copilot Vision. And this is in some ways, Copilot, as I think people think of it, we think of what a Copilot is, something, someone, or something in this case that is next to you, helping you as you do your thing. Um, to date, it's been a user interface. So it's a pane or whatever that you see on the side of another app, maybe. Um, in this case, you're interacting it with your voice. And so in addition to typing queries and asking it questions, you can actually just use your microphone and talk to it, right? Um, and that, you know, depending on how you do things, that might be better, worse, you know, it might be just a different way to do it. So it's just a different way to look at it. Um, this particular computer does not yet have a uh, Copilot vision, but if it did, I would click this and then I, I could talk to it, right? So I could say, hello, Copilot. Oh, I didn't do it. Oh, I did do it. It's not listening. Anyway, I'm just going to say, not, not going to worry about that one because I know it doesn't work on this particular computer. But one place it one place I do know that it works on this particular computer is in Microsoft Edge. So Edge has this Copilot pane that's on the side. Start a new uh, conversation here. And it supports Copilot vision. Hey, Paul. Well. All right, so it comes up. It, asks, it says, hi, hi, hello, Copilot. You can talk to it. Absolutely, Paul. We're having a call. <laughs> okay. I'm going to cut them off because seriously. Um, okay. So what are the types of things you might do with Copilot, right? So I have, uh, let's see if I can find this article. I wrote an article recently about a, a NAS that I'm purchasing and, and why I'm getting it and so forth. And so I could go into Copilot. Actually, oop, let me turn this off. Sorry. I could go into Copilot normally and create a summary is right there, right? And so summarize the main points of this page. And so it's going to look at this article that's right next to, right? Side by side. And then give you information about the article. Okay, that's cool. Um, that's text-based, right? So I uh, I did I clicked a button, but typically I would, you know, type in that 
uh, prompt and then it would answer the question, right? It, it's giving me a nice little hint here about what I can do. But with Copilot Vision, I can just ask. Hi, it. Paul. Hello, Copilot. What is this article about? Hey, Paul, it's talking about the author's journey in setting up a network attached storage device. They've gone for a Synology Distation DS224 Plus with the okay. RAM up. Thank you. That's good enough. I'm just going to cut it off. It would go on for a little while there, right? And then one thing you'll see every time is this kind of needy, uh, hey, how was it? Was I good? You know, and it wants this feedback. It's not much as you can say, but it's usually pretty good. So that's fine. Um, I don't have Copilot or rather Copilot Vision in Copilot, the app in Windows yet. But if I did, I could also bring up, you know, an image and say, what is this image? But I can do that. I'll just do it on the web. You get an idea of how that can work. Hi, can you tell me what this is a picture of? Sure thing, Paul. This image shows a sleek laptop, likely a Microsoft Surface, known for its detachable keyboard and touchscreen capabilities. It's looking pretty stylish with that colorful display. Isn't okay, it? Thank you. That's good. Okay. It's uh, yeah, a little, uh, <laughs> a little, a uh, little super positive about Microsoft there, but that's fine. It's fine. So when you think about what AI is really good at uh, these days, um, I think that summarizing is right near the top of the list. So it makes sense. You'd see create a summary here in the Copilot pane. You could do this in the app. Um, when you do run the app, by the way, um, I don't think I showed this earlier, but one of the things you can do is go into this um, quick view. And the nice thing about quick view is it it's over the top of other things because the Copilot interface itself can be kind of big on Windows. And this is a smaller UI. It you it lets you interact with something else. Now, I don't have Copilot Vision, so I can't do that yet um, in this interface. That will happen very soon. Um, and it might have already happened on your computer, depending. Um, so summarizing, right? So I, I, I used it to summarize this article, started, it, it got going on that. Okay. That's pretty good. Um, this is an article about, um, extended security updates for windows 10. Um, we did an episode about this pretty recently. This program is typically for businesses, but in windows 11, for, I'm sorry, windows 10 for the first time, they're allowing individuals or consumers to do it for one year only. Right. And this article is mostly about businesses, but it does mention consumers, right? And so I could go in here and ask it about that. Hey, Paul, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Could you tell me what parts of this extended security updates program article concern consumers? Sure thing. This article primarily talks about the extended security updates ESU program for Windows 10, which is mostly for businesses and organizations. But for consumers, the key point is that support for Windows 10 ends on October 14th, 2025. After that, the ESU program allows consumers to get security updates if they choose to continue using Windows 10. There's okay, also... i stop it right there, but there you go. So, yeah, so that bit it was right here, right? You can see that text that he basically read there. But then he also went through this. He, I'm sorry, calling it a he already, right? But the, the AI looked at this article... And it jumped down to this bit about um, about consumers, which I'm having trouble finding because it is hard. So it says for individuals or Windows 10 home customers, extended security updates for Windows 10 will be available for purchase at $30 for one year only, um, which was would be or would eventually be part of that summary. So that's actually really useful, right? So this is not a particularly long article, but it's kind of long. And if you were just looking, well, what what parts of this apply to me? That's a nice way to, so it's not just a summary, but it's a very specific kind of a summary, if that makes sense, right? So we've got summaries for articles, like we did it with these two things. We, uh, summary is kind of a weird term, but basically, you know, described in uh, an image using image recognition. Um, you could do this with PDF files, right? But you can also do it for videos. So when I switch to this video, this is Dave Plummer. This is a former Microsoft engineer. Welcome to uh, his, I love his channel. I watch every one of his videos. You can see summarize this video is one of the options. But I can also ask um, Copilot Vision to discuss this. Instead of getting a printout or, you know, like a text-based response, um, can this thing summarize this video for me? Hey, Paul. Hey, Copilot. Can you tell me, uh, what the top five points of this video are. Sure. Happy to summarize it, Paul. First, the video dives into the origin story of the Windows Start menu, 
tracing its evolution from the early days of Microsoft's operating systems. Okay, then thank you. That's enough. So it would have kept going, obviously, and um, and that's great, right? So that's useful. But how does it do this, <laughs> right? Um, this is only a 14-minute video. I would just watch this, frankly, but uh, and I would watch all of his videos. I really like this channel, like I said, but... Um, but how is it doing this? You know, it turns out that it's just doing it the same way it summarizes any document because every video on YouTube basically has a transcript. So it's actually just doing the same thing. So whether it's this transcript from the video, a web article of whatever kind, a PDF file, it's using the same uh, type of AI to examine the text, provide a summary, and then it can tailor it to how you described it. I said in this case I wanted, you know, the top five points. I said with that uh, Microsoft uh, learned article about extended security updates that I wanted only the bits that were related to consumers. And so it can kind of dive in and pull out those bits. So it's, you know, it's, it's useful. Um, I could have done this like this. In fact, I, I will. Um, if you prefer the text-based approach, that's still part of it. So that's cool. And uh, once this comes online in the Copilot app on Windows, I'll, I would be able to do it from there as well. So this is nice because it's built into Edge. If you don't use Edge, uh, use uh, Chrome or Brave or whatever browser you might use, you can still use the Copilot app to get the same functionality. You can do it with text. You can do it with Copilot Vision. It's up to you. So pretty powerful um, and useful, right? And also one of dozens, if not now hundreds of features that are part of Copilot that are all over the place. Um, this particular one, I believe, is only in these two places. I believe for now it's just Edge and Windows, but inevitably it will probably appear in other places where Copilot can be found, maybe even someday on our phones. Although I think that the big screen that you get on a computer is particularly good for this kind of implementation because it's nice having those two things side by side, right? Um, I'm not much of a talker, so I don't really interact with the AI uh willfully <laughs> but i bet a lot of people will and i it's hard you find it's it is kind of strange like how you fall into this pattern with it where you you know you apologize for interrupting or you say thank you or you, you address it as if it were a person like this is uh you know we're getting into a weird space here but that's that's what's happening i mean that's what ai is doing to us or for us i guess i don't know so hopefully you found this uh educational uh certainly the <laughs> co-pilot responses in some ways were hopefully at least a little entertaining um we will have a new episode of hands on windows every thursday you can find out more at twit.tv slash how thank you for watching thank you especially to our club twit members we love you as always uh if you're not a member of club twit uh, do consider joining you get these videos without any ad breaks but also, you get to support a great company that's making a lot of great content, and uh, it's good for your soul. So consider it. Um, you can learn more about that at twit.tv slash club twit. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week.